We align ourselves with the statements made by the representative Iraq on behalf of the non-aligned movement. Says the speaker, Uganda on behalf of G77 in China, Honduras on behalf of CELAC, and Eritrea on behalf of the Group of Friends in Defense of the United Nations Charter. We thank and welcome our brother, Comrade Bruno Rodriguez, and we welcome the delegation with him here today. We are grateful for the important information provided to us by them. It's clear that our beloved sister of Cuba continues to face great suffering. Capricious displays of imperial hegemony undermine multilateralism as well as the credibility of the United Nations. And that means that there is now an overriding need to abandon unipolar ways of thinking with the spirit of liberty. We need to speak out with our own voice, with identity, with our dignity, and in defense of our shared values. The international community must move towards and become a part of the new multipolar world, which is already in existence. It must stride towards better integration. It must reject and denounce the vestiges of imperialism, colonialism, and neo-colonialism. Cooperation based on mutual respect, the United Nations Charter, and non-interference are crucial for the development of all the peoples of the world. Applying or encouraging the use of economic, political, or any other measures is a violation, a flagrant violation indeed, of international law and, I repeat, of the United Nations Charter. It is reprehensible that today there are states who continue to impose the use of illegal, unilateral, coercive measures which are arbitrary in nature as a biased, selective political instrument to conduct a frontal assault against dignified, independent people, peoples who reject their interventionist measures and do not yield before the things that they impose or demand. In the face of this systematic interference, our peoples must unite with political will and in solidarity to reject, condemn, and overcome these aggressions. They must exercise their inalienable right to self-determination, defend national sovereignty, independence, and must build their own model of political, economic, social, and cultural development, free of interference, intervention, threats, or foreign aggression. Many decades have elapsed since 1959. Since then, the United States has had in place its illegal, inhumane blockade and consequently has attacked, triggered, and striven to entrench the destruction of the heroic and generous Cuban resolution. This economic, commercial, and financial embargo imposed unilaterally by the United States against Cuba has evolved and has been ratcheted up over more than 65 years. It is one more measure among the myriad acts of terrorism conducted against Cuba. Today, the embargo includes a proliferation of economic coercion and aggression measures. There is the very open intention behind these to isolate, suffocate, or immobilize Cuba. The United States shores these up with a intense slander campaign, and this has included the unfair inclusion of Cuba on the infamous state sponsors of terrorism list. Nicaragua demands that Cuba be removed from that list. The negative repercussions of the blockade have increased over the years, and that has stopped Cuba from having vital access to goods to meet their social, economic, environmental, and human development needs. The United States has on a mass scale and fragrantly undermined the crucial human rights of the Cuban people. In addition, they're showing total scorn for that fact. They violate the, the Cubans' right to life, food, education, and their right to development and self-determination. What we are seeing is quite clearly an international crime against the Cuban people. Mr. President, in Cuba, in line with the spirit of Fidel, 
The people resist today more than ever before, and they prevail with bravery over the most brutal blockade ever seen. Very few countries in the world would be capable, as Cuba is, of facing up to such a ruthless, uneven and protracted aggression imposed to destabilize and visit pain and suffering on the daily life of the Cuban people. Year after year, the international community has declared that it is unjustifiable, that is, what the United States is doing to, in an attempt to justify their attempts to subjugate a people that will never surrender. They are a people strong, driven forward by the will of Marti. They are absolutely resolute. There are people that have defended with dignity their sovereignty, their resolution, and their socialism. They're an example of solidarity and no nobility, an example of just how noble our continent is. Once again, we condemn the immoral and unjust embargo imposed against Cuba. Cuba is always acting in solidarity with others. It is internationalist in its outlook and is always ready to help the international community. We demand an immediate end to the economic, commercial, and financial embargo imposed by the government of the United States of America against the sisterly Republic of Cuba. That is a destructive policy which continues to stand as an immoral act against the Cuban people. This practice is illegitimate, illegal, and erodes the progress made in global economic governance and strips that progress of its cred credibility. The policy of the U.S. government is anachronistic and politically in obsolete. It is interventionist and it continues to be imposed in defiance of the universal appeal ringing out from the people of the world. The United States people have also spoken out against the blockade. And the U.S., in ignoring them, is showing total disregard for the United Nations. 32 GA resolutions have called for an end to this inhumane blockade. The people of the world including the people of the United States, will always be with Cuba by its side, walking with Cuba. They want this aggressive policy to be lifted. They want peace, respect, non-interference, and the end of the illegal embargo against Cuba. We are fully convinced that international solidarity with Cuba will remain firm. We are convinced that the General Assembly will today adopt this resolution presented by Cuba. In so doing, it will condemn once again this criminal embargo and all of the extra territorial measures and implications that continue to worsen against the Sicily Republic of Cuba. Nicaragua will also always stand united with the indomitable spirit of Martí Fidel Raúl Diez Canal, and will always defend the sovereignty and self-determination of the great Cuban people. Nicaragua, as it does every year, will vote in favor of draft resolution A-79-L6. slash slash we reiterate our support for, thanks to, and solidarity with this generous, beloved people and government of Cuba. We stand with their heroism and their solidarity, unconditional solidarity. They stand as an example of sharing brotherliness and sharing their knowledge. They stand as an example in terms of their capacities, their skills, and their commitment to the poorest of the earth with the sick with the illiterate and ultimately what we see from Cuba is that they're always ready to put their experience to make their experience available to anyone that might require it today we hope that this general assembly will adopt this resolution presented by Cuba and in so doing, it will be defending multilateralism, the United Nations Charter, and it will be seeking proper understanding, good neighborly relations, and the peaceful coexistence between nations in order to bring about this culture of peace that we all talk about and desire. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative for Nicaragua. I now give the floor to the representative of Nauru. We we'll listen to the statements of the representative of Nicaragua, the UN Assembly also condemning the U.S. blockade against Cuba. Stay tuned with Teresa Ruiz for more statements at the UN General Assembly in the coming minutes.